Jesus, we worship you. You are God and you are King. You are Elohim. You are Adonai. You are the first and the last. The beginning and the ending. You are our shield and our refuge. You are our hiding place. You are our security, Lord. We'll lift you up. We'll lift you up tonight. We'll lift you up tonight. We'll lift you up tonight. Be exalted, Jesus. Be exalted. Be exalted, King of Kings. Be exalted, Lord of Lords. Be exalted, Prince of Peace. Be exalted, Emmanuel. Be exalted, Lion of the tribe of Judah. We worship you, Jesus. Oh God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. Oh, okay, we are going to go ahead and pray and then jump into our lesson for today. And uh, let us pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for this amazing privilege to come to your presence, God. We thank you that you are our Father and we can come, Lord, to study your word and commune and fellowship with you. So tonight we just commit this time to you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in our midst. We welcome you to lead us. We welcome you to, to speak to us. We welcome you to just baptize us with the spirit of grace and supplication. I ask you for grace to be able to communicate your word with just simplicity, but with power that um, enables us to live from this line with just a fresh anointing and a fresh grace to pray. So thank you, Spirit of the living God. Have your way tonight. And just minister to us lord thank you for your presence with us even on this line and we give you all the glory and all the praise in jesus name amen and amen uh okay tonight uh i said we are on this journey 40 days to pentecost after Lent, and our focus is on prayer and the first two days the first day we laid the foundation on, on prayer and all of that and yesterday we looked more on what on why we should pray. The first day was more on what prayer was, and yesterday was on why we should pray. And tonight we are going to look at um, how to pray, and it's it's we are, we are going to start this journey of of Matthew, the Lord's Prayer. So we are going to take the Lord's Prayer in pieces because I don't want to take everything at one blow so that we don't spend so much time. I think I've been going 25 to 30 minutes. I felt it's just very long. So I'm going to try to be 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes at most, and then we should be done for tonight. So if you could give me a few minutes of your time, uh, hopefully we are going to finish um, on time and then you will be able to go back to your different activities. So I'm going to read tonight from Matthew chapter 6. And the Lord's Prayer, you have them in different, in several of the Gospels, but I'm going to focus on Matthew, the version on Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to start from verse 5, uh, just before I jump into the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 5. The Bible says, and when you pray, that was Jesus speaking. He says, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets. That they may be seen by men. As surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in, secret, in the secret place. And your father who sees in the secret will reward you openly. When you pray, do not use vain repetitions as a heathen do. For the think that they will be heard for their many words. Verse 8, therefore do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of even before you ask. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So tonight I'm going to focus on the first, just the first part of the Lord's prayer. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I'm going to look at just three aspects of that prayer. And uh, for those who have followed us from the beginning, the first two days, we talked more on, we have talked a lot about our relationship with God and Jesus is teaching them. And he starts, he says, our father, 
I think Jesus would have said, my father, then the, the disciples would have felt excluded. But he's saying, our father. So when we are coming to God to pray, we are coming to God who is our father. And at times the danger is to see God, our father, as like our earthly fathers are. And at times for those of us who might have had unhealthy relationships with our earthly fathers, the tendency is to look at God from the eyes of our earthly fathers. But God is beyond our earthly fathers. He is the, the ideal of what fatherhood should be like. And so when we are coming to him, we are saying our father, like if there is anything that is best, if there is anything that is good, if there is any image of an ideal father, he is, he's a million times better than that. So that's the father we come to. It's not just somebody's father. He is also my father. He's not just a father of the pastor. He's not just a father of the deacon. He is my father. So he is your father. So when we come to him in prayer, we are coming with that in mind, knowing that he's our father. And just imagine if you're talking to your father, it means he he's concerned about the things that concern you. His heart breaks when your heart breaks. He's happy when you're happy. He hurts when you hurt. So when we come to pray, we are coming with that in mind, knowing that the same way a father has emotions, the same way a father has feelings, that's how we are coming to the father in the place of prayer. So we come to him first saying, our father. So it's not just a recitation that we are making. We are, we are, it's like Jesus is almost like a guide that he's given the disciples that they have to use when they come in the place of prayer. So we are saying our father, it's, let me just give an example. It's almost like you can say, you can come and you say, daddy, I thank you that you're my God. And I know this is what I'm going through and my heart is really break. And I thank you that as my father, you understand my pain. You understand my hurt. Would you bring healing to my heart? You are my father. I have no one else to go to. You are, you are talking to him. He is your father. It's a conversation you are having with him as your father. And the second line of, the, of, the, of that, that first part says, who art in heaven. It's talking about God's residence. And theologians will say God is transcendent, means he's orderly. He's out there in heaven beyond us. Uh, but then he's also eminent. It means he lives in the inside of us. So we are hallowing, hallowed be a more, sorry, who art in heaven. His, his residence is not just in us. His residence is also in heaven. Jesus is wanting to let them know that even though the Holy Spirit will come and live in the inside of you, that God is transcendent, he's orderly, he's, he's different from us. And still he is in the inside of us. Uh, so that, that, that gives us an idea if your father is living in heaven and if your mind can comprehend how things are in heaven, the peace in heaven, the joy that is in heaven, the rest that is in heaven, you, you know that that's what your father wants on this earth. So when you come to the place of prayer, you are imagining your father in heaven and wanting to bring that heaven down on earth. We are going to see that a lot more when we go to the next verses. So the first part of our prayer is relationship. The second, when we come to pray, is um, uh, our father is talking about our relationship. The second one is the residence of God. Uh, and then the third one, hallowed be your name, is our reverence for God. Hallowed be your name, that the name of the Lord should be exalted. It's talking about the reverential fear, respect, that we come to the presence of God with. At times in our generation, it's easy uh, to be... It's okay to be casual in our dressing, but it's not okay to be casual when we, we address him. Uh, when I say casual, it means we, are, we cannot afford to address God with disrespect. His name is supposed to be hallowed. His name is supposed to be respected. He is supposed to, he wants us to come with reverential fear. Jesus was telling the disciples that God is, he's holy. So when he, when we come before him, we want to come um, knowing that we are coming to a holy God. So when I come and I'm praying, I'm coming, I'm saying, Daddy, let your name be hallowed in my life. Let your name be hallowed in my actions. Let the decisions I make um, uh, give glory and honor to your name. Let your, your name be hallowed in, in everything I do. In, in, in my family, I want to see your name hallowed. I want to see your name respected. So when you're, when you're praying the Lord's Prayer like this, like just th that first line, it's 
should probably might probably take you up to 10 minutes uh, if you want to pray so when we are talking about like how does somebody spend so much time in praying is for us understanding that jesus did not say this because he was trying to let the disciples recite the prayer yes it's good to recite it to remind but in our minds do we think through when we pray it was a pattern to teach us how exactly uh, do we pray so three things to remember tonight when we are praying uh, as we learn and as we go in deep on our, our prayer life is first of all god is our father relationship the second one is that his residence is in heaven, but also in the inside of us. He's transcendent, but he's also eminent. Hallowed be his name. His name is supposed to be hallowed, to be reverenced, to be treated with respect, with awe. Uh, uh, I want to say fear, but I, I prefer to say reverential fear, because when we say fear, some people are talking, talking we are thinking about being afraid. But we are talking about the reverential fear, respect uh, for the name of God. So tonight, I'm, uh, I'm going to, so if you have a question, please feel free to be able to put it in the chat box, as I said, from the very first day. And then I'm going to see if I can answer those as we go through um, these sessions. But then tonight, I want us to just pray. And we are going to just focus on those three. And we are going to pray for ourselves. We are going to pray for our cities. We are going to pray for our nations. And we are going to just Focus on the first part of the Lord's prayer tonight. That's going to be all we pray, we pray for. So if you would join me, we are going to pray together. Father, thank you that you are our father. You are my daddy. You are the daddy of all the saints. But then also you want to be the father of everyone who is in the world. Because you created and you made them in your image. So, Father, help me as your daughter and help my brothers and sisters who are your sons and daughters also to recognize, God, that you want to bring all of these ones who do not yet know you into the sheepfold so that they can also call you daddy. They can also call you father. We just cherish this relationship that we have with you. And we know, Father, that you are interested in our lives. You are interested in the things that matter to us. You are interested in the things that matter to our families. You are interested in the things, God, that matter in our communities, in our, in our jobs, God. So tonight, we bring all of those things and we lay them on your altar. We say, Daddy, we bring our hurts and our pain. We bring our victories and our successes. We bring our failures, God, and we lay them onto you or on, before you, Father. We say, you take them. And do with them as it seems right unto you, God. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much like no one else can love us. Thank you for revealing yourself to us in ways that we, no one else could ever do. Help us, Lord. That will be the sons and daughters who bring many more sons and daughters in to the kingdom. We thank you, Father, that you are enthroned in holiness, that you are seated far above God in heaven, but that you still live in the inside of us. And so we pray, God, that tonight you would help us to live our lives daily, um, having this awareness that you are with us. That the word says Christ in us, the hope of glory, that even in the midst of this crisis, that our hope will be that you are in the inside of us and that you live in the inside of us and that because you live in the inside of us, we have victory. We can overcome the circumstances of life. We can walk in authority. We can walk without fear, Father. So may this become so real. Remind us daily, Lord, that you live in the inside of us. Thank you, Father. We are so grateful that you never, you promised never to leave us, never to forsake us in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of whatever might happen, that you are with us. And we are so, so grateful. So Yahweh, we come and we just ask you, may your name be hallowed, may your name be exalted, and may your name be magnified. We pray God that our lives will line up and give you glory. 
We pray, Father, that everything we do, everything we say will give you I'm a glory, God, that our lives will be pleasing to you, that our lives will be living sacrifices before you, God, that our lives will be like sweet-smelling perfume before your throne and before your altar, God. We pray, Father, that our families will glorify you, God, that the decisions we make day after day will glorify you. That the way we speak, the way we act, God, the way we live our lives in our workplaces, the way we live our lives in our homes, in the secret place where no one else sees us. That, Lord, everything we do and say will give you glory. Let your name be hallowed in our lives, Lord. Let the world see us and know that Jesus lives in the inside of us, Lord. Let the world see us and know that we are your representatives, Father. May our lives give you glory in every way, in every aspect. Be hallowed in our cities. Be hallowed in our nations, God. Be hallowed in this nation, Father. Be exalted above every other, God. We just magnify you, Yahweh. And we say there is no God besides you. There is no one who can be compared to you. And we thank you that not only you are our God, but you are our Father. So tonight, Daddy, we give you all the praise. And we come to say we love you. We love you with all that we are, with all that we have. Because you have first loved us. And there is no way we would have known how to love if you had not loved us first. So be glorified. Be exalted. We thank you, Father, for the crises that are happening in the nations. We say, Lord, may your kingdom come in the midst of it. Let your will be done. We speak healing over the, our cities, healing over our nations, healing over our communities, healing in our hospitals. We speak healing. Spiritual healing, emotional healing, physical healing will speak your healing grace to flow even now in the name of Jesus. We love you, Father, and we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining our uh, As I said, for those who are joining late, I decided I'm going to go at most, I'm on 15 to 20 minutes, so I'm on 19. Uh, thank you for joining. Tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m. And we should be done by 7.20 so that we people can go back to their different things. We started today on how to pray and we started with our Lord's Prayer and we've done the first part. Tomorrow we are going to jump onto the second part. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Thank you, Pastor CJ. Thank you, Pastor Emeka. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you all. Have an incredible rest of your evening and the rest of your day. Blessings. Bye.